Hey friends, the time has come that I have to make some drastic, dramatic changes and I'm not happy about it, but I have peace about it. Does that make sense? Let's uh, go in and feed these guys. They act like they've never been fed before, but y'all know that's not true. Come on, watch out. Watch out, but man, there we go. Watch out. Now, the only reason that we still have rabbits, uh-uh, scooter, scooter, scooter. Back up, back up. Let me shut the door. Oh. The only reason that we have rabbits is for, well, they're good pets, you know. We're not breeding them for meat or show stock. We're not breeding them at all. These, pretty sure these are all three boys. Um, but our middle son, rabbits and cats are really the only animals that he likes. Now, Scooter Man here, he's a Patagonian cavey. He is my personal pet, and he is here to stay forever. Let me dump the water out. It rained last night. So, let me... There. Y'all eat your pellets. They get... They get rabbit pellets and guinea pig pellets from time to time. They have guinea pig pellets for the chinchillas. Um, the rabbits, of course, don't need the guinea pig pellets. But, uh, Scooter is a casey. He is very closely related to chinchillas and guinea pigs and even capybaras. They are a subset of the rodent family known as cavies, and they can't produce vitamin C within their bodies. Just like people can't. We get scurvy if we don't have fruits and vegetables. They would get scurvy also. So the guinea pigs and chinchillas we have, they have to have a special food. But um, Scooter, he gets enough fruits and vegetables that he doesn't necessarily have to have the guinea pig pellet, so he normally just eats the rabbit pellets. Sometimes, though, I'm pretty sure the kids do mix it up some. The rabbits don't need the extra vitamin C. It will give them diarrhea. But the rabbits and cats are really the only pets that our middle son likes. Now, he is 17 years old. He has autism. And we're dealing with quite a few issues concerning his autism. So I got them fed. The goats are hollering. Let's get them some food. When he was younger, he wasn't very vocal. He didn't really express his opinion much of all. But now that he is older, he has found his voice. He has found out that he has an opinion. And boy golly, has he let us know. And part of me feels really, really bad that we just didn't know. And that he has lived his entire life so far well unhappy uh another part of me wants to say well too bad you're gonna have to get used to it but that part i'm having to squelch that part that's not a very good parent that's very selfish of me to even think that so a lot of prayer has gone into the things that we are doing lately the decisions we're making um it's not easy. Now the goats. They need to be fed. Let me get their scoop. This is Jojo Billy Goat and Pepper Jack Billy Goat. Pepper Jack is a naturally polled goat. That means he does not have horns, does not have the genetics for horns. He is a tricolor Nubian buck. Jojo does have horns. He actually has scurs. You see that little thing sticking up off the top of his head. He was disbudded as a baby, but huh, his testosterone has kicked in. I smell it from here. You can probably smell it from wherever in the world you're watching. Billy Goat stink, but he is a Nigerian dwarf. Let me get them some food. 
Yeah, we have emus too. Hey, Moo Moo. None of our children like goats. None of our children like goat milk. Um, we are down to just two goats, these two, both boys. Not very useful for a working farm, is it? Okay, guys, you know, you gotta watch out. Watch out, no, move, move, move. You gotta move, all the way move, yep. Get down, come over here, all the way to, no, come over here to the emo. No, over here, let's trick them, here. Here, here, here. And pour it real quick, there we go. Come on in, Moomoos. So, despite what anybody tells you, goats are not easy to keep. Most of that is my fault because we don't have proper fencing. We have ramshackled together pallet fencing. Uh, here by the barn, here by the house. We're working on changing that. Uh, you know, takes money. Something that we have very little of here lately. The outer perimeter of the fence is cattle panel fencing. Our whole entire property, you know, it's just two acres here, but it's all fenced with cattle panels. But I'm going to do a video talking about the goats and probably the emus later. Y'all got a bag in there. How did, how did you pull that bag in there? You did it, didn't you? You did. You did. But anyhow, back to the changes. So a 17 year old has started to vocalize his opinion about things. He has sensory issues. He doesn't deal well with sound, uh, loud sounds, and he doesn't deal well with loud smells, <laughs> to put it kindly. Um, he's only been outside the house twice this whole entire year. Uh, once with a friend and then once with his mother. He doesn't doesn't do much of anything. There's my hand in it. Um, he has recently made his opinion known that he does not like the pet parrots in the house. They are loud, um, and so I'm having to make make that decision that my personal pet parrots. Can no longer stay in the house. We have lots of pet parrots, you know, a lot, most of them do stay outside, but the macaws that are in the house, they are very close friends of mine. I enjoy them very much. I like the emus, I like the chinchillas and the rabbits and the Patagonian KV. I like the ducks, the chickens, I like everything. Uh, I am, in times past, I have tried to be the authoritative parent and say to the children you have to help me do this this is part of your chores i no longer do that they help when they want with the animal chores they still do their inside housekeeping chores keeping their rooms clean that sort of thing if they have a personal pet animal they are responsible for taking care of that of course i make sure that they do that um other than daniel and the rabbits he asked about the rabbits from time to time, um, we're not going to find them a new home, even though he hasn't come out here to see them in over a year. Uh, that's okay. He knows that they're here. He can see them from the windows of the house, and he does look outside. He's just scared to come outside. Uh, with everything happening in the world, it's a very scary place for us. Um, but for those that are neurodivergent you know the ones that are on the spectrum it's a very very scary place when you don't understand certain things that are going on um, and so we deal with that the best that we can um, but I am going to rehome some of the pets that I have had inside I'm going to downsize not downsize, I'm going to consolidate some of the aquariums that we have. We're going to keep the bearded dragons and the monitor lizard. Uh, those aren't an issue for him, they're very quiet. The motors on the filters of the aquarium seem to bother him. Um, and so we're going to change those out. But the parrots are going to have to go and live 
outside now of course when we have baby birds they're going to be inside we just don't have a choice of that and that's something that he's going to have to work through on his own um you know guys i'm open to suggestions i've never you know i'm middle-aged he is a teenager now um you know i'm not 700 years old and have 500 years of experience of being a parent of a an autistic child I'm not an expert uh, we don't know just like you you didn't know how to be a parent until you had children you had opinions about what would happen and then your children came along and they showed you what's what you know you saw that crying kid at Walmart and you said my kid would never act like that but you know what your kid acts like that my kids do too um, just something you have to deal with and so this is me dealing with it yeah, I'm venting. I'm having a pity party. Um, just letting you know that we're not going to have any of the adult birds in the house for videos from now on. We'll still have all the birds outside. That's not an issue for him. He doesn't come outside anyhow. But to make his life a little bit simpler, a little bit easier, you know, life's hard enough as it is to to be neurodivergent is the correct term now. Um, life's even harder. So, let's go and look at what we're doing. Oh yeah, he absolutely hates little Buster Dog. So little Buster Dog can't come back to where our bedrooms are anymore. He has to stay in the living room, in the kitchen, and of course outside. And that's probably just fine. That's probably for the best. Uh, you know, I'd rather little Buster Dog not be on my bed in the middle of the night either. Buster, look up at me. You're a handsome little man. Hey y'all, I want to show you the spiny mice. These are mice from Egypt. They are very closely related to gerbils. They're in a very small temporary uh, aquarium right now. I think I'm about to give them away to a friend that I think will provide them a loving home. The, um, I just have to downsize a little bit. Uh, you know, we have a child, uh, a 17 year old with special needs and he has issues. And so he takes precedent over our pets. So, you know, a little bit sad for me, but I like these girls, they're both girls. And uh, I like them. They're called spiny mice because their hairs are, well, they're spiny. Not a hedgehog, but they're spiny. They're very closely related to gerbils. What's that? So this cage in front, I'm going to retrofit and I'm going to turn into a nice aviary for Moose and Charlie to hang out in. Um, we're just not able to keep them inside anymore. They will still be pets always and forever, but they're going to have to come and hang out here with the other macaws. They will be just fine. No issues, no concerns with that. Um, you know, the needs of my family come before my personal wants and desires to have a, a pet in the house. So that's where we're at today. Jeremiah is being awesome and he's feeding the macaws and pheasants that are here. I have fed the other macaws. Let me turn. Here we go. I have fed these other macaws. I have... That hybrid pair, paramilitaries there. First cage of the paramilitaries and two pairs of scarlets. Uh, sulfur crested cockatoos and two pairs of vosses and two pairs of blue front Amazons. 
But as you can see, they're loud, and they are. And having a child with autism with sensory issues, it's not fair to him to have the birds in the house anymore. Another thing that we are unfortunately going to have to do is separate these babies from the mother. Uh, she can't stay in the house anymore. It's just too much, too much work, too much trouble. But it's too cold for the babies to go outside. And so they are going to go in the brooder uh, with some other chicks that we will have that we will show you in a different video. I would rather not have to separate them this early if it were, you know, a warmer time of year then she could keep her babies. But these guys, they're, they're almost two weeks old now. So they've been with Mama for quite a while. I tried putting the new hatch chicks in with her, thinking that she might accept them, but that didn't happen at all. So she's been a very good mother. We're not going to let her incubate more eggs, sit on eggs, uh, until the spring. Um, but I'm happy to have the chicks. I'm very, very happy to have the chicks. I'm excited to see what they're going to be. She is a, a naked neck cuckoo satin, one of the silky types. And the dad was a frizzled silky rooster, a black frizzled silky. The wind just blew our door open. Yeah. Um, the dad was a black frizzled silky, not a, not a sizzle. Not a frizzled satin, but a frizzled silky. And so, I'm excited to see what these are going to be as they grow. You can see the little naked neck. I'm thinking that that's the female. My understanding with the cuckoo gene is that it is a sex-linked dominant. And I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. I've never worked with sex-linked dominant genes before. So, with the black rooster and a cuckoo hen... Um, all of the boy babies should be cuckoo, and the girl babies should be solid black. And I'm thinking that's what we're seeing. The, the little naked net baby, she has dark skin, and she's solid black. And the other three, they have light skin, and they have varying amounts of different colors on them. And you can see even the, the wings have some, the feathers coming on the wings have some little speckles on them. And so I'm fairly confident that that is what that is. That means we're going to have three roosters and a little girl. The little showgirl naked neck. That'll be cool to have. We'll see as they grow up. We'll continue to watch them closely. Okay. Watch out. Do y'all want some hay? Here. Watch your heads. You've eaten all your pellets. Here. 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 Move. Move. I'm, I'm trying to give you some hay. There. Eat the hay. Be a good goat. There you go. Such a good little goat. You're a handsome man, Pepper Jack. Well, you too. You too, Jojo. So guys, pray for us. <laughs> Keep us in your thoughts. We're trying our very best. If you have any good suggestions, I'm certainly open to it. Uh, and just so you know, the... Public schools here don't want him. There are no counselors available out here where we live. Uh, we're on our own. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye.